Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. I am currently um, at my friend Michaela's house in Washington State. I arrived last night, and I, oh my gosh, feel so good being here. I feel so at home. I feel like I actually landed with family, soul family that are supportive and exactly what I need. Um, Michaela and I have known each other for like nine years. Uh, if you check my like, original, like, first podcast I ever made a couple years ago, she interviewed me on there because I was so nervous to make a podcast. Yes, me being nervous to make a podcast uh, that she was like, I'm going to host you. So let me just interview you. And um, I met her when I was in New York City living there. And she was the first friend I ever made outside of um, my religion. So first real friend I ever had that was unconditional love and we've been all over the world together she's come and stayed with me in Thailand we've been in Berlin together Portugal Vietnam many other places I can't remember now (sighs) and now here we are in Washington and I literally (laughs) have my camera set up on a tractor right now because I haven't bought a selfie stick. So I find that really funny. I am in farmland. So Michaela's family uh, inherited, she inherited a Christmas tree farm from her family. It's like 10 acres of land that just goes like back that way. And her and her sisters are going to turn it into a permaculture farm. And I just find that so beautiful and so new earth vibration. And she's so excited about it. And it's just funny because she's like a New York film editor. And now she's like, now I moved back home and I'm going to make a farm. (laughs) And I'm like, yeah, girl, get it. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I... I just feel a lot of things right now and I thought it would be nice to make a podcast. Also, it's a lot more sunny than I realized. So let me just see if I can get in some sort of shade. The sun's not as hot here as it is in in Thailand, so at least that's nice. Or the desert that I've been in at Burning Man. Um, By the time you're listening to this, I will have released my Burning Man vlog. I hope you watch it because it's pretty epic. And I'm very proud of myself for editing that vlog because it's like the most complex one I've ever made um and I was like we were driving yesterday my friend Will and I were driving up here well he was driving I was editing for like five hours that's how long it took me anyways I wanted to share with you (laughs) about how it's going for me many of my friends are asking many of all of you my soul family they're reaching out and supporting and I want you to know that I really really appreciate you And I just basically can't look into the camera because it's too sunny right now. It's all good in the hood. Um, I still got the croc life going on here. So if you're watching visually, you can appreciate my crocs. I think I'm saying that right. I kept kept calling them something else like... um, I don't know. They look like little boats to me. Uh, Crocodiles. Anyways, I'm getting distracted. So many of you are asking how I'm doing. And I just need you to know that I'm okay. Uh, And also that it has not been great (laughs) for me. And I think this is like one of the most beautiful things about being a human in this timeline is when you can just be like, I have no fucking clue what is going on and I am still okay. (laughs) Um... Like I was saying in my last podcast that I just, I, I just kind of hit this wall where... I was getting so much like rejection from my family and also the knowingness that like they actually really love me Um, and also like my reconnection with my mom and I still am going to go see her after I basically I'm just here in Washington to just like take a break from everything and then I'm going to go back and just want to make sure I'm still recording. Uh, I'm going to go back and like dive back into the family healing but This is something for you to know that is very, very, very important that you take a break sometimes and be gentle with your body. Like there's none of this matters if we are not like feeling good in our bodies all the way, you know? So, uh, and I definitely have a trauma response of growing up where I am just used to just going, 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 going because I didn't have a choice. I was just in survival mode of like having to make it work. And 
uh, I have done the work to, uh, you know, transmute that, let it go, be more gentle with my body. This is what I teach a lot of you is like, let's be soft. Let's take a deep breath. <sighs> and also, all of you know this, that when you are facing your family stuff, this is like your core origin of you know, belief systems. And that is when all of this is going to be tested. So it's very easy for me to say this when I'm sitting in Thailand in my little island bubble home with my dog and my cat and living next to the beach. And it's a whole other thing to experience it when I'm like actively in my homeland, in the programming I was growing up, I grew up in and like facing my family stuff. So I just said yesterday, like, I need a break. Like, let's go where it's safe. And we got here and Michaela was just like, she has an, ex she has like a kind of, in, in America, we call it a mother-in-law house. So it's like a, its own little apartment house, condo thing outside. And then there's like this huge farmhouse where like her and her sister and her sister's partner and I don't know, some other friends. I, I can't remember how many people were here last night. There's a, it's like family vibes, friend vibes. Um, and so she gave me the little house outside so I can have my own energy to stay in and Will and her and everyone else to stay in the house and like just you know like just took care of me like by the time I got here I was just kind of falling apart a little bit and I was like she's like do you need some food here's a blanket here's this here's that and I'm just like thank you I love you and it's really important that even all of us who are doing our best and are like being strong and choosing unconditional love it's really important especially that people have like us have support that we have support that is actually supportive I think that's really important to say do you have a support network that actually feels nourishing for you because you can have friends you can have family and they can love to be in your energy but when you leave their energy is it actually supportive and nourishing like do they show up for you in a way that you actually need i've spent so many years where i have so many people around me so many people want to hang out with me and be in my energy and i was feeling more and more drained i was feeling more and more just kind of like i wanted to run away because for me that was the only option in order to recharge because the people around me at the time were not actually nourishing for me and then I woke up to that and I got you know mentors and coaches and I realized that my energy is very precious and I need to protect it and I need to create safety for it and I need to choose people that are actually nourishing for me so that's what I've done and I'm very grateful that I have built this soul family around the world and it's funny because all the rest of my soul family were like oh you're at Michaela's house tell her I said hi you know like everyone's checking in and it's like more and more connection and it's so beautiful and and then I like couldn't sleep because I sometimes when I hit this like overloaded processing emotionally I just kind of start shutting down and I noticed I was like I never am like on my phone just like scrolling on Instagram and I was doing that last night so that happens to me as well as everyone else and then I was like okay stop so I meditated I did some journaling and I finally went to bed and when I woke up this morning, I was feeling so emotional. I was feeling like I was on MDMA, like, or in a little bit of mushrooms. I don't know. Like I was like, and I'm very sober just to clarify this. Um, but I, I just felt like this was my big download was like, you know, I've done years of therapy and family constellations and psychedelics and la 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 la, all the healing stuff in order to get to the point intellectually where I understood that my family was doing the best they could. Like even now, they're doing the best they can. They love me and you know, they are choosing their sovereignty. They're choosing to give up their sovereignty to the religion in order to receive connection. And this is, before I go into this download that I got had today, I wanted to say something that I forgot to say in the podcast yesterday was, you know, I talked about how my family is choosing uh, the connection with the religion and the community and basically giving up their personal sovereignty. Like they said, yes, they wanted to spend time with me. They loved me. And then when the fear kicked in of losing their connection to the religion or that community, then they disconnected from me. And um, so th they were like flip-flopping. And for me, that was really 
hard, obviously, to deal with. And I was really feeling into this. And the thing I wanted to say to all of you was like, do you, this is a question that every one of us has to ask ourselves and we need to be honest with ourselves if we want to live a full life. I want to live a full life. Do you want to live a full life? Like, I want to live a life where I feel fully alive and I feel fully in control of myself and I feel fully in my power. So the question is, are you giving up your sovereignty in some way? And what does that mean? Basically, are you choosing to not be your authentic self sometimes in your life in exchange for connection, in exchange for love, in exchange for belonging? Because each one of us, we have the like divine right to feel that we belong. We have the divine right to feel that we are loved and connected purely for being our authentic selves not for conforming to a religion, not for dressing a certain way or acting a certain way or eating a certain food. You know, like even I experienced this when I was dating Faraday in the vegan community. There's just a lot of this pressure to conform to a very specific thing. Everything's a matrix. Everything's a cult. If you, if you give up your sovereignty, if you give up being your authentic self in order to connect in order to feel that you belong there because there is a place for all of us for each of us to feel like we are home that we belong that we are safe to open our hearts purely for being our authentic selves and in order to find that place this is the fucking irony in order to find the place where you feel at home and authentic and safe and all the things you actually have to choose first that your personal sovereignty that this this idea of you being your authentic self no matter what no matter if it creates disconnection around you no matter if it means that you don't belong in your current living situation life situation whatever you have to choose that that you being your authentic self matters more than the connection around you so basically you have to step into the unknown, into the void of I'm going to show up and be my authentic self. And yeah, it might create disconnection with my family. It might mean I lose a couple of friends. It might mean I lose all my friends. I have, I have had periods of my life where I have literally given up my whole entire friend group. And people to this day are still upset at me that I do not hang out with them. But it's because me hanging out with them equaled me not being my authentic self. And for me, sovereignty is everything sovereignty personal sovereignty me being myself all the way is the foundation of how I build the rest of my life because for me if I don't do that then I'm not living my life fully I'm literally not allowing universal energy to flow through me in some way because when you get this is the thing that might not land for some of you if you understand this it's great if it's not it's okay but when you are your authentic self all the way you are literally Imagine your body is like literally like this vase or I don't know, a channel. Imagine like a circuit board. Okay, I think that's the better way to describe it because I I describe human design like this. Like our bodies are literally like a computer processing circuit board. And when we are being our authentic selves all the way, the energy is allowed to flow through our bodies fluidly in a very flowy, like constant stream and go out into the world. And when we do that, then we are attracting in everything that we're meant to have in our life. Like the universe wants to give you every single thing that your heart desires. Your like family, friends, wealth, security, abundance, travel, adventure, whatever it is that you're craving. The universe wants to give this to you, God, source, they want to give it to you so badly. But the thing that is fucking with that is you not being your authentic self. Because when you're your authentic self, you're like the circuit board of energy that's just lit up. It's just like, it's lit up so bright that like nothing can resist coming to you that you desire. Like it just, like you you want this car? Okay, it's coming. It's coming, you know, because you're just so excited and you're in such the knowingness and the trust that you deserve it and it's happening and whatever, whatever. I just said car because I'm looking at a car. But anything that your heart desires, you know? And... I spent most of my life um, being my authentic self inside, so being spiritually awake inside, but not feeling safe 
to be that externally. So I was m- my authentic self. Like I knew who I was. I knew I was connected to the, to the universe. I knew I had a source connection. I, like I was awake spiritually, right? But I wasn't my authentic self externally. And I think that's at least one step in the right direction because a lot of people have no fucking clue who they are. And also they like, so then it's like a double whammy. Like they got to first figure out who they are and then they got to be able to express that externally, like internally is first and then externally. But I knew it internally. And so I would spend many years like trying to find safe people, trying to find safety, trying to find safe places, people, situations for me to be able to be my authentic self and to shine. And when I moved to Koh Phangan, um, the universe was kind of just like slap in the face, like, here's a breakup, here's a scooter accident, here's dengue, all in one month. <sighs> and I didn't really have a choice. I just had to be myself because I had no mental energy or emotional energy to put a mask on anymore. And in that moment of relaxation and allowing the energy to move through me, I attracted in like people that are my best friends to this day like Isa the one I was sharing about that I went and saw in Nevada City like she is one of my soul sisters in this lifetime well she was also raised Jehovah's Witness and we went through all of lockdown together and when I had dengue that time in Copanyong when I first got there she barely knew me she showed up for me every single day she would even get in bed and sleep next to me to make sure I was okay and I was so uncomfortable with this because I was so hard for me to receive and she was like, no, I am worried about you. I want to make sure that you're okay. And I need to know if whether I'm going to take you to the hospital or not. And so I'm just going to sleep here. This is the kind of people that you attract. This is like your actual soul family that show up for you when you are being your authentic self. And I hope that it doesn't take you getting slapped in the face by the universe like it did for me in order to allow yourself to be that way externally. It's safe. I'm telling you it's safe. If you're listening to this, then you are on the right track because there is a whole community of us that is building right now to create the safety, to create this bubble of safety. But each one of us, including you, need to do your part to be your authentic self. And that doesn't mean that you need to agree with anything I'm saying. That's the thing between <laughs> difference between me and religions and cults is like, I don't give a fuck if you agree with me or not. Um, all I care about is that you feel empowered to be yourself all the way. That's all that matters. If you get one thing out of this podcast, that is literally all that matters is that you feel empowered, activated, inspired to go out and be your authentic self externally, not just internally, because when you do, it will attract everything your heart desires. Um, Michaela just got home with her boyfriend. Um, so I want to go back to the other download that I had today. Um, so I was, I woke up and I was like super crying and like sad. I wasn't, okay, hold on. I'm going to back that up. I wasn't sad, but you know, like when you're on drugs, again, I was completely sober, but I'm just using this illustration so that you can kind of understand if any of you have taken psychedelics, when you are on psychedelics like MDMA and you just feel so fucking heart open that you're like, I just love everyone and I'm just experiencing all these feelings and I've like shut down for so long and now I'm feeling all of them and I need to tell people <laughs> and then you like go and you like, oh, there's a donkey. Hi, baby. Hi, cutie pie. Hi. Oh, I don't know whose dog this is, but it's very cute. Um, and then you go around and you like message all your friends and you're just like, I love you. Oh my God. I love you so much. Which is like, I love this doggy so much. Um, so this morning when I woke up, that's what I was doing. I was like going around and wait, don't step on my mic. Um, thank you. I was going around and going around. I was laying in bed and I was messaging all of my friends just telling them how much I love them, like on voice messages. And then I would like, I literally couldn't talk sometimes because I was just crying so hard. And I, and I, I know that what it is, is this is the download. I spent all of this time understanding, like getting to the point where I understood intellectually that my family actually loves me. Like literally there's nothing wrong with me. Cause like when you're a little kid and also when you're a young adult and like everyone disconnects from you, it's very natural to think, this something must be wrong with me because it's like my entire family and then me you know I have a couple cousins that are not in the religion too but we're we're getting closer over the years but back then I wasn't very close with them so 
um, I created a belief back then that like something must be wrong with me and also that I need to work for love because basically my family was unavailable emotionally and so then I would get in relationships where I, the person was emotionally unavailable even my last relationship like the person was very emotionally unavailable in his heart you know like this is a pattern I have and then my my pattern is to work for work and um work to get them available because that's just what I thought I had to do so I just kept attracting that into my life and so intellectually I had gotten to the point where I was like I know my family loves me but basically what I'm trying to say is now in my body I understand wow my family really really loves me and they're just you know doing the best they can and they happen to be like the my family goes both sides of my family are in the Jehovah's Witness religion at least four generations back like my great-grandparents who came over on the Oregon Trail if you're American you know what that means that's very funny to me this is like back in the 1800s and like the religion was started in the late 1800s so like it goes back far right so and this is like an all-encompassing world like a lot of people my parents included most of their work like their actual money comes from working for people within the religion it's like everyone's sharing resources and like you know hiring each other and and also your social standing you know your whole community like the people you marry the people you know deeply like everyone is in the religion and so um they are doing the best they can to stay within that community because that's for them what they were born into and that's what they're choosing and that's what they I guess they they need in order to feel loved and belonging and that's great I'm happy for them in the sense that they have that because actually in the in the religion the community is amazing like there's a reason why my soul chose to be born there so that I understood what it felt like on an embodiment level to have an entire community, a tribe, have your back. You know, it's not about the money. It's like, how are we showing up for each other? And um, my dad had cancer when I was young and we really didn't have money for a while. And like everyone showed up for us. Like people would just, like money would just show up at our door and people would bring food and like they would babysit my sisters and I and like just so many different ways that the community showed up. And it really felt like uh, from a young age, I was like, oh, I don't have to think about this all by myself. It's like we, we're doing this as a community. And now I think the reason why I was feeling so emotional this morning was I was like, from an embodiment level, I was like, oh, there is nothing wrong with me. Like, you know, <laughs> like really my parents and my, my, my grandparents, my sisters, all of my cousins, like everyone's just doing the best they can. And... And like a friend of mine was saying yesterday, he was like, you know, your family loves you so much that they were, they actually overrode their programming in order to express that love and in order to um, like genuinely and authentically share with you how much they loved you initially. And it was only later that the programming kicked in. But like, basically it's like they're in this fog and this cloud and like the programming is this fog it's like this matrix that they're in right (laughs) it's like neo in the matrix you know like when they unplug unplug people from the matrix like basically my my family like poked through the matrix enough in order to share authentic love with me and then they got sucked back in you know they got plugged back in and it's okay because it showed me enough like wow from an embodiment level the love is still there you know and i know that they love me so much and and my reaction in my body is like one again there's nothing wrong with me and there's nothing wrong with my love and there's nothing like I don't need to do anything in order to receive love and give love I am good enough just the way I am right and my reaction to feeling that was I just I just want to pour this love out to everyone that I love and share everything and also what I found really interesting this morning was that it wasn't just my soul family I was connecting with or that I felt the calling to share like to to message it was people that I have you know had a conflict with it was uh, a man that I connected with that Bernie man that I actually really really was excited about and then he didn't show up in a way that like made me feel safe emotionally um and like sharing that vulnerably with him because like afterwards he did finally reach out and 
you know, we've been messaging back and forth and I could tell that like my, I could tell that my emotional, okay, so this might be a Scorpio thing, but like, um, I am basically super hard open. And then if someone crosses a, like a standard, if they go below the standard of how I deserve to be treated, I just kind of like, I'm just like, we're done. It's like, you know, wash, wash my hands of this person. And in the past, I wouldn't say anything to them if they weren't like super close with me. I would just be like, okay, well, you know, we tried, you know, like, bye. And, and, and if they keep reaching out, then I will like respond, but it will be like very emotionally distant. You know, it'll be like, yeah, it's nice. Great to see you. Yeah. uh But I'm not actually there, you know, like I'm saying stuff, but I'm not actually like emotionally present. And I realize that this is not who I want to be. Like, um, and I re- also realize that like literally every single situation that you feel called to, like only if you feel the excitement for it, is an opportunity to share this unconditional love, like for yourself or for the other person or both, right? So for me to message this guy that I met at Burning Man and just share with him, like, I just want you to know this is really vulnerable for me to say. And like, I, I really honored the connection that we had because my, my, one of my intentions for going to Burning Man and for coming out to the States in general was like, you know, I'm, I'm 34. Like I'm ready to have kids, you know, I'm ready to be in a deep partnership with someone where we're like building a new earth together. And I'm also fucking good on my own. So this person needs to like meet all of my standards and like make my life way better than it currently is, because I know that that's what I'm going to give to them. Like, 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 you know, all of my past partners, whatever they have to say about me, their life changed fundamentally and exponentially for the better by meeting me. And I know this is the energy that I give off or I give off. I give to the person that I'm in love with. So when I went to Burning Man meeting this guy, (laughs) suddenly I'm talking about this guy. I really like him still. Um, but, um, I'll just share the story because it's super cute. And I think that you will, you will also resonate because everyone I've been sharing the story with lately have been like, Oh my God, it's so cute. So I set this intention to, you know, connect to the spiritual leaders here in the States and also to, and also to like anyone who is like, like, and also to men. So like two separate things. One, I, you know, I, I set the intention to connect to spiritual leaders and I met Jake Paul and Albert Marcus and Vanya, his wife. And I I had many epic adventures that I have, I will share later uh, in some podcasts. But the other thing I really wanted to do was connect to men who were emotionally mature. We're going to put that out there first. (laughs) Like this is the first thing that I need because this is something that has been lacking in my past relationship. And like grounded in this reality and also spiritually awake because this is what I am, you know, like I'm emotionally mature. I am grounded in the 3D reality. I am also fucking spiritually awake. I understand the timeline. I know what's happening and I'm here leading the way just by my beingness, right? If nothing else. And it was really exciting because, okay, so this is a story. Um, At Burning Man, I was it's it's hard to explain so like burning man is this kind of like u shape the city goes in a u and like all the camps are around this main like just like desert area that's a circle where all the art pieces are so that area is called the playa and then all the camps are like in a u all the way around the playa and i was at the top of the u and it goes like it's like a clock it goes like you know one to twelve i was at two and uh, the other side of the camp ends at like seven, right? Uh, or nine, it goes all the way to nine. And so like the, the, what I'm trying to say is usually what happens is you stay in kind of your own area. Cause it's like 70,000 people and it's, there's things happening everywhere all the time, all at once. Right. So, uh, usually like what I would do is kind of stay in my little community area because you could spend days just exploring all the camps there and the workshops and the dancing and the, chai and the food and like everything right there's everything that you can imagine is happening there all at once but towards the end of the week I really wanted to go explore the other side of of Burning Man like the other side of the city so I was like okay I'm gonna bicycle over and you know it takes like 20 minutes to bicycle there it's like it's really big like people it's very hard to explain how big this place is and how many people are there Um, so anyways one of the last days I said to myself I'm going to go over the other side. I'm going to bicycle and I'm just going to open myself up to whoever I need to meet and just have the best time ever. 
and I did have I had a great time like and I loved going by myself and just having these like individual explorations where I'm just like I'm vibing I want to stop here and look at this thing oh no okay I'm ready to go I get a matcha I randomly ended up at a a cacao ceremony and I connected with you know like the crystal the white sound bowls I asked the lady like that was there I was like can I play these and I was like playing them and like putting my ear down and like listening to them and I was I was on cacao like I just didn't cacao so my heart was super open I was activated and I was like I was really playing them you know I grew up playing drums so for me like vibrations but this was the first time I really connected to the sound bowls in a way where I was like this is a spiritual experience like I've received it but it was the first time I've like given like like worked with them to give that out and people were coming up to me and being like thank you thank you for the sound healing and I'm like I'm just messing around here but that's a whole other side story but I'm just trying to say that like I don't well and I also want to say that I'm going to buy some of those when I get back to the island because it was really magical and I really enjoyed it playing with those but anyway so these are like a little fun adventures I was on and then towards the end of the afternoon it starts to get really hot like basically the hot, the heat builds up throughout the day and then I usually go back to uh, my camp and take a little rest before sunset because sunset's so beautiful on the playa there's dancing again like sunrise and sunset were my favorite and uh, so I started bicycling back and I was hot and tired and suddenly I hear like some really good hip hop music and I was like you know I just pull over I don't even like lock my bike and I just like I'll just dance for five minutes and there's probably like five people on the dance floor and there's tons of people in this one camp so all the camps are um inclusive like everyone can come everywhere and they're always trying to get you to come to the party but at this one like a lot of people were resting because it was really hot so there's like tons of bean bags and couches and people are just lounging around like smoking and talking and having a drink or whatever and there's like yeah like five maybe ten people on the dance floor and so I just kind of go to the side and I'm like dancing I'm vibing and I noticed that there's this one guy he's like very tall which I love and it's got a lot of tattoos he's white which is not normal for me like I actually don't normally date date white men I usually date brown or black men um just happens I think they love me I love them (laughs) um but anyway so he was dancing in a way the same way that I was dancing like I love African music I love hip-hop music and I was just going for it you know I don't need any drugs or alcohol for me to dance I just let the energy flow through me And there was another woman there, like near this guy that also had a lot of tattoos and I thought they were together. So I was just like, and I was good, you know, like I was doing my own thing. I was like vibing hard. I was having such a good time. And there's these moments when you're at Burning Man where you're just like, oh my God, is this my life? Like this is like those moments where you're just like, you feel so good and so excited and so grateful for life that you kind of want to cry and laugh all at once. I was having one of those moments by myself on the dance floor. So then this guy comes over and he's like, he just kind of like starts like, you know, vibing with me and like kind of, you know, through his body language, like, do you want to dance? And I was like, yeah, cool. And so we were dancing together and then we just got in sync like perfect synchronicity and when a guy can dance really well it is such a fucking turn on for me because this is also a thing with most white men cannot dance you know they kind of just shuffle or they do like weird (laughs) weird eccentric movements but it's not according to the beat you know and like my whole body is like you know I have had it um, channeled that I've been African in many 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 past timelines so like for me like when music especially African music or hip-hop my whole body just starts moving in a way that is you know, divinely aligned. I don't know how else to say this. And I don't mean that in a stuck up way. I just mean like, I love dancing and I love it when someone else is a really, really good dancer. So we were dancing and we were having so much fun and everyone was watching us and smiling because like we were just having so much fun, you know, like that kind of fun where it's just like contagious. Um, So, and then it, you know, I'm on my way home. So I was really hot. And I, so I was like, I just told him, I'm like, I need to get water. You know, like I had already run out of water and you really have to drink a lot of water because it's the fucking desert. So uh, he came with me and we went and found some water. And then we sat and talked for like hours, just like on the couch. And it was so natural and so flowy. And like, I put my legs up on him and like, he was like, you know, massaging my leg and, and just like looking deep in my eyes. And like, we were just having a good time. And we were talking about a lot of spiritual things and like there were so many times where one of us would say something like about Atlantis or you know what's happening in the world or you know our soul mission and the other person would be like 
oh my God, I literally say the same thing all the time. Or like, you're the first person that's ever said that out loud and that's how I feel, you know? And so it's like this click, 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 click moment. And then we would get to this point where we just kind of look at each other every once in a while and just start laughing because we're like, what is happening right now? And he also told me, he's like, yeah, I was on my way home to my camp and I just heard the music and I had to stop. Uh, like he was only there like five minutes before I was. So it's just all very, very, very universally aligned, very synchronistic. And he lives in California. Um, and he's like, it's just cool. Like we just had such a nice connection. He's like, yeah, normally I actually hang out by myself because you know, it's hard to find people that to connect with on this deep of a level. And we just like went straight into it. So then it starts getting towards sunset. And I'm like, you know, I have a, I had a rhythm where I would get up in the morning and uh, make it to the temple. Cause for me, the temple at the Burning Man is my favorite part of all of the Burning Man. And it, I don't know why I keep calling it the Burning Man. It's my favorite part of all of Burning Man. Um, because I really feel that as a society, as a human species, we need more spaces to openly and safely grieve for people who have passed, to grieve for ourselves, to have a sacred spiritual space that is outside of any denomination, outside of any religion, and is completely inclusive, you know, and also a space where it is like welcomed and encouraged for you to connect with the people around you. So like any given day when I was there, um, like I would just sit next to someone and meditate and then we would start getting a conversation. Like one day I was there and this guy was like, this from the second I ended up talking to him, like I was like, can you watch my stuff? I need to go get my water on my bike. And when I got back, he was like, I just want you to know from the moment you walked in, I could feel that I needed to talk to you, you know, and this wasn't a romantic thing. He was just, he was like this older guy and he was just like, I just feel like there's some reason why I need to talk to you. And so we started talking and I shared with him like, you know, I made a shrine for my friends and let my friend Kane um, passed away last year from suicide and he at 28 and he's like, oh my gosh, I, um, I tried to kill myself at 28. I jumped off a bridge or he jumped into a, a cavern. Like he just, he jumped off of something like, yeah, I think it was into a cavern, like into a river and he woke up and like everything was broken and he was like upset that he hadn't died, you know? And to this day, he still tells his mom and like a lot of, of people that are close to him that it was an accident that he fell. And I said, but yeah, you're, you're, I shared with him that he's not fully honoring, honoring his experience, his authentic experience by not sharing this with the people that are closest to him. And I mean, he apparently, um, this guy, this is a very tang tangential thing, but I thought the story was really nice. Like, he's like, I do uh, work with like kids um, that are in like, uh, like foster homes and kids that are having a rough time like he works with them and he share he does share his story authentically with them that like it's okay if you've gone through something rough or you're in a dark place like I was there and I got through it and I said yeah that's amazing that you're doing this for them because I really believe our biggest heartaches are the biggest gifts that we can give the world and also to give yourself a gift it's really important that you're able to be your authentic self with your mom he kept talking about his mom I was like with your mom especially because otherwise a part of you is not going to feel like it's coming home all the way and he just started crying like so hard and we like had a really great hug so like for me this was stuff that was happening every single day at the temple and it wasn't just me like you would see someone just burst into tears because you're reading like everyone can write on the walls and also bring, people can bring stuff so they print bringing like photos of people who have passed and shrines and different just different things and when you're just sitting there and you're like, walking around you're reading stuff it's just so natural to just grieve and I think it's really important that we as a society and as a human race like grieve together you know, and so I would really see so many people like just burst into tears and then someone standing next to them, hug them and then they would get in a conversation because I think a huge part of the human experience is being um, witnessed in our story. So like say you have someone who's passed away, like as a society, we are not encouraged to talk about people who have died. And, um, and it's so important to do this. It's so important to honor the people that we love who have passed away. And I really invite you that if someone is talking to you like in the future about someone who's passed away to give them space to talk about that person, to ask them, what was your favorite part of that person? Or what did you love about them? Or what do you miss about them? And you will find that it creates such a deep connection. Like as a society, we are programmed to believe that talking about death somehow 
equals disconnection and it's the complete opposite it only equals disconnection if we are not allowing ourselves to come home to these parts of ourselves and the people that we have loved who have passed they are part of us like the people I love like they will always be part of my story and they will always be one of my biggest motivations to like shine my light so brightly because yeah I want to do it for them Anyways, <laughs> um, they burn the temple at the end and like it's 70,000 people, you know, and like you could literally hear a pen drop and just all you can hear is people crying and like blowing their nose and just witnessing it. And it's so powerful. I was crying so hard. I was like, we need more of this because it's so healing, you know, it's so, so healing. Anyways, so back to my story with this beautiful man. Uh, that day, I hadn't been to the temple yet. And so I told him, I feel really, it's going towards sunset. I feel really called to go to the temple. And he was like, I don't want to, I don't want to part ways with you. Like, can I come with you? And I said, yeah, have you been? And because what I started to realize is that for some people, they were avoiding going to the temple because they were avoiding, I don't know if it was just fear of, of not being able to handle grief or if it was fear of being alone in that grief, probably a little bit of both, because uh, I had multiple people tell me that they were like, they couldn't go to the temple, it was really hard for them, or they needed a friend to go to support them, because they were worried about what was going to come up, what was going to happen within them emotionally. And I recognized that was what was happening with this guy. Uh, he was like, um, he said that his brother had passed away, and, and some other friends, like a lot of friends had died recently, and he hadn't been there yet. Um, and this is getting towards the end of the week. I think this was like on Friday. And Burning Man ends on Sunday. So I said, okay, well, we can go together. So we went and it was really beautiful. I ended up like hosting like a guy like sitting right in front of us, which just started like sobbing. So then I like was there and I hosted him for a little bit. And then I turned back to the guy I was with and I could just tell that he was about to cry. Like he had been writing a letter to his brother while I was comforting this guy and I was like started talking about something like surface level and then I looked at his face and I was like oh, okay and I just I was like come here and then I put I put his arms around me like I sat in the middle and had him like wrap himself around me and I just held him and he just cried and cried and cried and it was so beautiful and I was like this is what I'm here for you know like men that are emotionally mature fun and also like vulnerable and also spiritually, like all the things. So it was really beautiful. And then we were meant to like meet up. He was like, so um, he had to go back to his camp. He was volunteering at a camp that was like, his camp literally hosted people who had psychedelic overdoses. So they have this whole camp there that if you are having a bad trip, you can get taken there and they'll like show up for you. So like, that's literally what he does, is, like hold space for people at the burn. And he had to go check in with his camp. And then we were going to meet up at a party later. And he's like, but I know how things go up Burning Man. So like, how do I get in contact with you? Because like no phones are working. He didn't even have his phone with him. My, like none of the reception works. And so I had, I just had a photo copy of my passport. Because like some of the camp, some of the places you need this, if you're uh, going to get drinks, they just, they want you to have it. Anyways, I don't need to go into that, but I had a photocopy of my passport and I was like, here's my passport. And I just wrote my camp name on the back, but I had it in my heart. I was like, I'm going to see you like in two hours, you know? So I went home and I was just in such an afterglow of like, wow, I'm so grateful to the universe for this experience. And also I'm so grateful that I felt so safe with him. Like I felt so safe to be myself, like completely, you know? And my fun self, my happy self, my sad self, like whatever version of me was there, it was safe and it was welcomed. And um, and I'm also just really grateful to the universe to have these examples of like beautiful men that are like showing up in the timeline, you know, and like being these leaders and willing to, yeah, willing to carry some of this load. It's not just us women that are doing it. And I'm talking about spiritually. Um... And so then he doesn't show up. I go to this party. He's not there. The party wasn't even happening. He missed up the date. He's the one who told me to go to this one party. Apparently he was supposed to have good music, good hip hop music. And the party had happened 24 hours before. 
it was fine because I was also tired because I hadn't like rested and stuff and I just figured something happened um and so the next day I'm with a huge group of friends and we just happened to be on that side of um the burning like the camps and I told my friends like I want to go find I know which camp he's at and I want to go find him and see him I was so excited you know and so I like I like make all of my friends like there's like five of us I like make us all like go around and like ask around and like find his camp and I go in there by myself and I like ask anyone do you know where he is do you know where he is and they point me in the right direction and then I find him and he tells me that like his um one of his friends had taken too much drugs the night before and he ended up having to host him all night and that friend was still not doing okay they were gonna have to like take him out of Burning Man and so obviously like very naturally he was very stressed out you know but um even then the what I received energetically from him was towards me emotionally unavailable and suddenly I felt emotionally unsafe around him like and it's not like I felt unsafe you know in the sense of like I'm scared it was just like I didn't feel safe to have my heart be open in the same way that it was the day before and this was really interesting for me to notice because I was so excited you know I was like wow like even if we just end up being friends you know like I'm just so excited this person exists and I'm so excited that the universe brought us together like I feel like it's like literally destined in the universe so anyways I tell him where I'm gonna be like later that day at a party and he doesn't show up and then like <laughs> days go by and I end up I even end up in his city he lives in Nevada City I even end up there for a couple days you know just like hanging out with my friend Issa and other friends me not the river and it's a very small town and so I thought like maybe I'd bump into him because I have no way of contacting this person I don't know his last name he just gave me like his nickname basically and, um, it's just a funny thing. This is a very Burning Man story of like, I literally have no clue how to contact this person. I have to leave it up to the universe. And then the day I leave Nevada city, he messages me like he had found me online. He looked me up. It's not very hard to find me. I mean, especially when you have my full name and yes, my real name is Brittany Bond on my passport. So some people were asking me that recently, but yeah, the answer is yes. So anyways, he finds me and he just messages me and we're like messaging and, you know, nice and, you know, like, how are you doing? And it's great. And I, and I even said like, oh, I, he, he was like, that was such a beautiful experience. And like, I love, oh, and we kissed at the temple. It was, there was so many magical moments with this guy. We kissed at the temple and like, a, a, as I was crying and like telling him like about my friends and it was just so beautiful. Anyways, he was just like, I loved your eyes and your soft lips and I loved connecting with you. And still I felt this disconnection in my body when we were talking the last couple of days. And this morning, so this is full circle, my story. So this morning I woke up and I was like, I need to be authentic with this person. I need to actually tell him what's really going on because I realize I'm going into a trauma response of, me becoming emotionally av avoidant myself just kind of like cutting this person off like emotionally even though I'm like oh I'm answering and I'm acting like everything's normal it's not you know I need to speak up I need to say something so in my own like nice vulnerable way I shared with him just like I just want you to know like I really honor this connection and it was one of the highlights of my Burning Man and, and even if like this person even if this guy isn't you know, my divine masculine equivalent, it showed me I'm on the right track. It showed me I, my vibration is attracting beautiful men into my life that are like showing up and doing the thing. And also sometimes I think the universe, like right when you're very close to getting what you want, it kind of tests you because this guy was like on paper and vibrationally felt amazing and was great. But there was this moment where I, oh, I felt unsafe emotionally. And in the past, I would just override that and I would just keep going and like try and get closer to this person and just be like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. And I'm actually not fine. I'm actually like, this is not okay. You know? Um, and it's like, it's not that this person is bad. It's just that they don't meet my standards of someone I want to connect with romantically. And so this is what I told them. I was like, you know, the person that I choose to be with, like, they're going to like go to the ends of the earth to find me and track me down. And, and like, mind you, like, like the day that we were connecting, he was literally like, I want to go on, I want to come on this road trip with you. I can show you around. So he was like saying all these things. And my ex also said all the things, but like 
the actions. The actions are really, especially with men, this is why I'm realizing the actions. This is probably everyone, but I'm talking about romantically, so I'm talking about men. Uh, the actions of how they actually show up in your life is what really matters. Because people can say whatever they want to say when they're happy and they're in a good place and they're feeling resourced. But are they going to show up there? Are they going to show up exactly the same even when they're not resourced? Or are they, at least they're going to let you know. At least they're going to communicate, you know, so that you feel safe and you understand what's happening the whole way through. So um, anyways, I shared this with him. He hasn't responded yet, so <laughs> keep it posted. I don't know if he's going to listen to any of this podcast. If you do listen to this, if you're listening to this, shout out to this beautiful man. I'm very happy that you're in my life and I'm happy for this connection. And that's the thing. This is what I told him. I said, I'm just so happy that I met you. And I'm happy. What I realized after my last relationship is I think my ex and I, we both loved each other so much that we were afraid of losing each other. And therefore we were not all the way vulnerable and like emotionally safe for each other. We were always like putting up these little walls with each other. And then because of that, it felt like I didn't actually have a best friend because it was like, I don't know how to put this into words. Oh, loud bike. Sorry for that. <laughs> it's very loud. Okay. Anyways, I don't know how to put it into words concisely. So I'm just going to do my best, but it's basically like, um, when you're raised in a trauma responding, like develop trauma environment, like um, the person that you love growing up, so like say your parents, you love them, but they're also hurting you in some way. Like they're causing trauma by not being emotionally available or maybe actually being abusive, right? And so the people that you're attracted to are not actually, in the future usually, this is what happens, in the future the people that you're romantically attracted to are actually not safe people or you don't feel safe with them. And so you're not able to like drop in in the same way that you would with like your friends or like people you feel safe with. And the reason why we're attracted to people like this when we're adults is because we want to heal this original trauma. How trauma gets healed is that you attract someone into your life that is close. They're creating a situation that vibrationally and emotionally feels close to the trauma that you had growing up. And then your body and your psyche is hoping to have a better solution. This is how trauma gets healed. So it's not bad that we attract these people into our lives, but the point is to heal it. The point is to be like, oh, I see what's happening here. And I choose something else. I choose actually to love myself and to be around people who are emotionally safe and also to speak up when I don't feel emotionally safe. So and I, I believe this is true. Like, I don't think like people need to be emotionally safe all the time in order for them. I mean, I think consciously they should do their best to, but like, that doesn't mean that you're going to feel emotionally safe all the time because sometimes we can be getting like trauma response. Like we can be in our own psyche creating stuff or, you know, there could be something from the, ba the past that's getting triggered or there did do something that is, you know, that is like not in alignment with what you want. Like, like, like I'll give this guy as an example, like I would have loved for him to be more communicative, um, to, to at least like energetically un help me to understand that he still was there. And he, he like, like in that moment when I saw him the next day to be like, I just want you to know, I really honor our connection and I feel the same way I felt yesterday. And to like, you know, be in alignment with everything he said. Um, and also I was having a trauma response to it because it was this opportunity for me to heal something, you know? And so I recognize that, oh, if I keep going in this situation without talking about this, then I am putting myself in a situation where I feel emotionally unsafe. And so the healing part for me was to speak up. And I'm so grateful that I did this and I feel so good about it because it doesn't actually matter how he responds. If he responds and we're friends, amazing. If he doesn't respond, okay, that actually also shows me that we're not in alignment, you know? And there was, <laughs> I'm gonna go into another story. There was another guy that I messaged this morning that I had a little romance, romance with at Burning Man. Um, and there was a couple things that happened where he also became emotionally unavailable. And it's just very ironic because his birthday is one day after my exes. Actually, my last two exes both have birthdays on September 9th. And this guy has a birthday on September 10th. So they're all Virgos. And there's something about Virgos that I've realized um, that my friend told me that sometimes Virgos, she thinks that Virgos have the hardest time out of all of the astrologies. 
because according to my girlfriend, they have the emotional reality of a cancer. Like they're very, actually very deeply emotional, but they feel that they, it is not safe. They feel like it is a weakness to show their emotions. So they want everything to look perfect on the surface, like a Leo. So they have like this weird mix of like wanting to be perfect externally, but also feeling like a deep well of emotions internally. And the reaction to a lot of that for a lot of these Virgo men that I have experienced is to just kind of shut down emotionally and become very emotionally unavailable, become in their heads, act like everything's fine, but I can feel that it's not fine. And then it creates this disconnection. And with this other guy at the burn, like, we had this beautiful uh, experience at the orgy dome together. And then like the next day we hung out and he just like, wasn't all there emotionally. It was like, I got, I got like the, it felt, it felt, it felt like how the last year and a half felt with my ex-boyfriend. Like he's there, he's saying all the things he's showing up physically, but emotionally he is not there because he was. And so anyways, I talked to him about it this morning. We're still in contact. We're, we're great friends now. And I talked to him about it this morning and he, I just said to him like, This was really good for me to experience because it showed me like another opportunity of someone who's being emotionally unavailable and that I don't choose this in a romantic relationship. So kind of after that situation, I friend zoned him. Like, I don't know if he realized that or not, but I already did uh, because I was like, no, I deserve better. I deserve someone who's like not. And this is this is the thing that is so important is that it is not about feeling good all the time. It is not about having it all worked out. It's the fact that you are willing to be heart open in the void of the emotional unknown, willing to be like, I don't give a f- I don't understand what's going on. I, I feel overwhelmed right now. Or I feel like I'm just processing a lot in my body. It's like, it's the communication of whatever is happening in your body with the person that you love that's standing right in front of you that can tell something's happening in your body and having that connection together of being in the unknown together. So for me, it's not like, like a guy, a guy who beats my standard. It's not that he is feeling great all the time. No, that's not being human. It's that he's willing to be vulnerable through all of it and share all of it with me. The, you know, the, you know, I'm not feeling good right now, or I feel overwhelmed, or I'm just having feelings, like share them with me. Let's do this together. To me, that is the most important thing. That is the heart open. That is the unconditional, because when you are willing to be that vulnerable with someone, that is when you are able to understand what unconditional love is. Because for me, unconditional love is I love you, no matter if you're having a bad day or a good day, a sideways day, whatever, whatever. I love you. I love you. I love you. So like, let's just be in on this experience together. And I know it's so vulnerable because even for me, I had a friend tell me the other day, like Josh, I was talking on the phone with my friend Josh and like, he was like, Brittany, how, how do you react when you feel vulnerable? Is it easy for you to share with people? Hey, I'm feeling really vulnerable right now. And I was like, Ooh, that is a very good question because it's very rare for me to feel like vulnerable to the point of like emotional overwhelm like usually I can talk myself through it I can journal about it I have tools I have resources that I've learned over the years um but there was a moment when I met Jake Paul at Burning Man where I just got so overwhelmed and it was because I was actually so excited to meet someone on my level you know like someone who actually has the capacity to like change the world in a very active way for the better um and it's so interesting because I was shut down. I was just like, man, we're, and so it's, it's not that I don't understand this. I'm just saying that like, in order for me to have a working relationship with someone, like a rom- rom- romantic relationship, these are now my standards. So it was really beautiful for me to meet these men and have these experiences because it's kind of like the universe testing me like, okay, here's something that's close enough. Like these people, these men are so beautiful and they meet, they check all of your other boxes but maybe they don't love themselves all the way. Maybe they haven't hit the unconditional love for themselves first. And so there's no way that they can give this to you and blah, 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 blah. Maybe they need to take care of their life more. Maybe, you know, like maybe they're not set up in the way that they have the extra energy to show up for you in the way that you need and that you deserve. And I'm like, okay, I honor this. I'm receiving this consciously and I choose. Let's just be friends. That's amazing. And thank you for being a new soul family for me. Like, And I think that if we all were a lot more um, honest with ourselves first and then like open about this communication, oh my God, we would have so much more connection in the world. Like we would be able to actually see like where do we need to have 
Like, where are we actually aligned to have a connection? Instead of, like, trying to manipulate yourself into getting love from someone or only showing a part of yourself and masking the rest, it's like, let's just be ourselves. Let's be authentic. Let's let the energy go through us. Um, I was looking at my notes because I wrote something earlier that I wanted to share. Basically, I think I shared most of it, but the the thing I wanted to reaffirm was, like, the most important part is to feel safe enough to be heart open and vulnerable with each other. Like, if you are able to do that with the people that you love, fucking mission accomplished. Good job. You did great. And if you're not, then I invite you to take the lead on that. Like this morning, and I said in this voice message, I was like sending voice messages and I was like literally crying. And I was like having a hard time talking. And so to, to the guy that like uh, I talked about, the second person I talked about that has the birthday close to my ex, him and I are already at a level where we're like, fr- we've friend zoned each other and we're like, we're good, you know, like we're really good friends now. The first guy that I talked about, I sent this message and I'm like, I told him like, I'm just kind of losing my voice. And, you know, I think that I couldn't even tell him like how emotional I was because it really actually wasn't about him. And then like, and we're not in a place where I can even explain all these things. And so, for, oh my God, it was so vulnerable sometimes when I think about things that I do I'm like did I really just do that and also I know I it's like a really big thing I'm doing great I'm just going to give myself a little words of affirmation there I'm doing great (laughs) because this is what I mean by being a leader is that you you fucking take the lead you do things that are vulnerable and and hard for you that are that are growth like this was growth for me um, because I already feel so much more in my power I, I feel like I took my power back like when you're grow up in a home where everyone's very emotionally unavailable and you need like in order to survive you kind of have to like give your power away and like tiptoe around things and try and get love where you can it's so empowering as an adult to be like no I deserve to be treated better than this you know like I deserve to be loved in a way that actually feels safe for me and that feels nourishing And I'm going to speak up for that because the universe is listening. God is listening. Source is listening. And when you keep setting your boundaries and you keep speaking up for what you need in a way that is super loving and kind, you will always get it. I also want to say that uh, this morning when I woke up, I talked to some of my best friends in the whole world and cried a lot. So I talked to my friend Feta. Oh, I love Feta so much. And I talked to my friend um, Michaela. Not Michaela. I'm staying with Michaela. I talked to my friend Rosanna, who's like one of my best, best friends in the whole world. And she was telling me that she had like a mushroom trip recently. And like I was in the mushroom trip with her. And we were just like in the 5D, like showing everyone unconditional love. And like she was like, I just really understood how like people have a very hard time staying in this unconditional love because they have negative beliefs that they're not worthy and that they're not good enough. And they basically don't deserve this love just for being a soul in the timeline, which you all do, you know? And so she was like, I realized on my mushroom trip that, you know, you and I are just here like showing all this unconditional love because she leads huge communities in Portugal and around the world as well. She's also a community leader. And like, we're both just here like trying to like show everyone like, hey, we can do this together. Let's do it. Come on, let's go. And then like, she's like, I just realized that people like are really some of them just can't yet, you know, and we're like pulling them into this vibration and it's just like not sustainable for them yet. They can't hold it in their bodies. And this is when I was getting back to what I said in the beginning is like when you have negative beliefs, you're literally causing constriction in your body. So like if your body is a circuit board, you're causing constriction in your body so that the energy cannot go through. And so therefore you're not able to hold like this higher vibration. I'm getting pretty esoteric here. My my girlfriend Daria says that I get esoteric about energy. But for me, this when I close my eyes, I literally see this energy moving through people's bodies. Uh, so for me, it's not esoteric. It's very literal. Um, and I wish that people understood that energy is more literal than we realize. And that when we can align the energy in our bodies that everything's going to happen for us so anyways while I was talking to both of them I was out literally picking wild blackberries here and picking wildflowers and it just made me so happy because um, I grew up you know every summer in Oregon and Washington and they just have you know like blackberries here wild blackberries are like weeds for them like it's actually very hard to get blackberries out of your yard because they have thorns and they just grow very invasively 
<laughs> and because of that, like literally everywhere you go, there's just blackberries. Like on the side of the ro- road, you can just pull over and there's just like fields of blackberries and everyone's just picking everything and it's okay. Like no one's like, those are my blackberries. Like there's an abundance of blackberries everywhere and people are trying to get rid of them. So growing up as a kid, I would spend every summer going out with my cousins and just eating blackberries to the point where our stomach hurt. <laughs> like we were just ate so many of them. And, um, and then our, my mom and my aunts would make like blackberry cobblers. So anyways, I just feel like a little forest nymph here. My nose is stuffy. I feel like a forest nymph, like just wandering around the forest, talking to my soul family, eating wild blackberries. And my, my hands are getting like black or purple, whatever, black, purple. Um, and I'm just really grateful to be here. Um, we're going to go to a static dance tonight. I think I need to go because I think we're going to head out soon and um there's one like they live like 20 minutes outside of seattle so there's a big uh, spiritual community here and i'm really excited to go dance um there's more that i want to say but i feel like i'll say it in the next one i'm sending you all lots of love and i i know that you're gonna have an amazing day i'm manifesting this for you so wherever you are in the world i invite you to go connect to nature some at some point today fucking hug a tree i'm not joking it's very good for you just say thank you to nature even if it doesn't if you don't understand it on a more emotional spiritual level if you just do it i think it will make you feel better okay i will see you in the next episode